Our top focus this hour, President Biden announced the first tranche of sanctions against Russia for recognizing two breakaway regions of Ukraine. As the West continues its efforts to stop Moscow from what they fear is a full-scale invasion. After weeks of warning that Russia was going to invade, President Biden speaking at the White House said categorically that Russia sending troops to regions of Donetsk and Luhansk was the beginning of a Russian invasion of Ukraine. Who in the Lord's name does Putin think gives him the right to declare new so-called countries on territory that belong to his neighbors? This is a flagrant violation of international law and demands a firm response from the international community. He's setting up a rationale to take more territory by force, in my view. And if we listened to his speech last night, and many of you did, I know, he's, uh, he's setting up a rationale to go much further. This is the beginning of a Russian invasion of Ukraine, as he indicated and asked permission to be able to do from his Duma. Biden's sanctions target Russia's two state-owned banks that the United States says are key to Russia's defense sector. They will no longer be able to do business in the United States or access the global financial system. Five Russian elites and their family members have also been sanctioned. All five of them directly benefited from their connections to the Kremlin. This includes Sergei Kirienko, a former prime minister of Russia. President Biden warned that Russia may face additional sanctions if it continues its aggression. While the United States does not intend to send troops to Ukraine, the United States has authorized forces already stationed in Europe to move to Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken on Tuesday cancelled his meeting with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, which had been planned to be held on Thursday. Remember, Blinken said that the meeting would be held if Russia did not invade Ukraine. The United States has maintained that the doors to diplomacy would always remain open, but this would involve a Russia first pulling back its troops as a sign of de-escalation. The White House on Tuesday dismissed any meeting between Biden and Putin for the time being. Western powers have been warning for months that Russia was preparing to invade Ukraine. Russia previously denied these allegations, said that it only wanted security guarantees that NATO would stop expanding eastwards and ban Ukraine from joining its military alliance. Both of these demands were rejected by the United States. And for more on this, joining us live from Seattle is former U.S. military intelligence analyst Josh Manning. Thank you so much for joining us. President Biden has announced a tranche of sanctions on Russia. How effective do you think these sanctions will prove to be in deterring Russia? Well, we'll see. I mean, um, they're already stronger than what happened in 2014, um, which made some effect, but not a lot. Um, but I think we know from the Magnitsky Act um, that the Russians have a lot of trouble with sanctions that work. Um, so I think this is a good first start. I wish it would have happened a little bit earlier, um, but here we are. At least it's, it's a step. It's a step in the right direction, especially going after the banks and keeping them off the international finance system. But I think there should be more, I think. Um, and I think it's right. I think it's to, it's to ratchet it up as Russia takes more aggressive action and to match that with, with tougher sanctions. And so I think that's what we'll see going forward. And we'll find out if uh, the Russians found out a way around it. I doubt they have. Right. And how do you assess the role of the international community in the situation? What do you think could be the next steps out of this crisis? You know, it's been great to see. I think one of the things Putin was really banking on um, is that in the last four or five years um, under the Trump administration, um, we had walked so far away from NATO and Western Europe um, that it was a, something we couldn't um, fix. Right. And then we had a crisis with uh, France over um, arms sales to, to Australia. And so I think he banked that that. Um, that alliance, right? The Atlantic, the Atlantic Alliance was ruined. The Transatlantic Alliance was ruined, um, but it's not, and it's growing stronger every day, um, and it is repairable, very repairable, very fast, and it's being repaired, you know, uh, on this onslaught that he's planning to put at the doorstep of NATO. Also, do you think Russia's advancement of troops will be limited to East Ukraine? Do you see this as a full-scale invasion? 
I do. I do. And I, I've said this since November. Um, I think you're going to see a couple different fronts. I think you're going to see eastern Ukraine, which is sort of going to be the initial focus. But as you saw today, there were some moves to recognize a place called Transnistria, which is in Moldova. That has been a long time splinter republic that Russia has concentrated on. It has what it calls peacekeeping forces there and have had that there for decades, um, but they're there just as a force in waiting. Um, and so we'll see if that expands into Moldova, um, which will expand it towards Romania. Um, and so then you're talking about some some different crises there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Kiev, I mean, uh, Kiev is gonna be, uh, it's gonna be one of the focal points of, of a bombardment and missile campaign that the world hasn't seen in a long time. All right, Mr. Josh Manning, thank you so much for joining us with an analysis of the situation. Thanks for having me again. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.